Okay, thank you. So I've got a room full of people. I'm I'm itinerant, so I travel a lot, and I've just arrived in uh, Vienna, and another group of really, really, really lovely friends from Finland <laughs> who are also traveling around. We just happen to kind of meet here, and they've just just kind of arrived. So it's a little bit chaotic, but it's all <laughs> good. That's all cool. So yes, yeah, so I'm. Um, yeah, my name is Rakesh. Rootsman Rack is actually my DJ name. Uh, so, uh, so I kind of present myself really as first and foremost, I'm a DJ. I'm a reggae DJ who, in part, my part time, I kind of teach permaculture. I teach people how to grow food, how to, you know, how to live in an environmentally friendly way. And um, and I guess I've been teaching ever since I can remember, uh, even at school, which I didn't agree with at all um in terms of I, I just really didn't get on with school and the school style and what they were trying to teach me I really felt that they were brainwashing me into believing in a world that I could see was very different so even there you know even though I failed almost every mm -hmm. single exam I yeah my, my school friend said whenever they had a problem whenever they needed to learn something about life they would always come to me so I've been teaching ever since I can remember. In fact, my name, Rakesh, means Lord of the Full Moon, which um, I only found out quite recently means uh, as a, uh, the moon doesn't have any energy or light of itself. But as a guide, as a teacher, through its presence, it reflects the sun's, uh, energy, the sun's light. And therefore, through its presence, it guides. So Rakesh is someone who teaches through his presence so yeah so the idea of, of today i was invited to ask uh, to talk about a little bit about my uh, way of teaching and um and i guess you know coming from a background where i really shunned education um uh, i you know i i really couldn't um i really couldn't follow the, the style of education that that was kind of presented to me i didn't agree with a lot of what they were saying so my style of education is really uh, formulated by my experience of how i really don't want to be brainwashed and um and so yes yeah, so i guess if we're looking at how to um reimagine education i guess the place where we may, might need to start is really looking at well, why? What is education about? What is its purpose? And so, as far as I'm concerned, oh, yeah. sorry, just one second. Actually, do you mind maybe talking outside? Sorry. sorry, I'm just getting distracted by my, my friends here. Um, so, yeah, so if we're really looking at the, yeah, what is the purpose, first of all, of education? Um, so it's how is it that we get people to meet their needs, uh, how is it they navigate the world, you know, meet their needs in a way that also takes care of other people, in a way that takes care of the planet, takes care of animals and insects and birds. And, you know, how is it that, that we can navigate living in this most amazing, beautiful world that we live in uh, with respect for each other, for our surroundings, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, um, yeah, so education for me is about uh giving people not just the tools but the experience of really living in a way that is respectful to each other and our surroundings uh let's say how you meet your needs in a really beautiful creative way so i guess the next area we can look at is well who um you know we're looking at anyone everyone is you know <laughs> I think a really good friend of mine, uh, he would always say that uh, the time when you stop learning, the, the symptom of, of not learning is basically death. You know, so the only time that you stop learning is when you leave this planet. And um, and so, you know, so our scope for who to educate is pretty much anyone and everyone. And but in particular, we really need to be. Uh, uh, you know, guiding the, the younger people so that they, they you know, uh, as we can see right now, we see so much eco anxiety and what have you, and we need to be able to give them the strength and the, the, the knowledge that whatever it is that they do, if they behave in a particular way, if they see the world in a particular way, then they will be part of the solution. You know, I really love this idea of, um, 
Joanna Macy, you know, where she talks about how, you know, future generations will look back at us and uh, they could say one of two things. Either, you know, you knew, you, you, you knew what was going to happen. You could see, we, could, we, we looked at all the newspaper cuttings and uh, all the reports. You knew that if you carried on working this way, the world would end up in this disaster. And yet you did nothing. You stood by and you watched. Or you could look back and, you know, and, and the future generations look back and say, wow, in spite of all the government pressure, the corporations that were trying to stop you, in spite of all the, you know, the nonsense that was going on, you stood up and you did something about it. Wow, thank you so much. What inspired you? What gave you that strength? So for me, this is what education is. It's about giving people the, the tools that they need and the experience to actually go about uh, bringing about that beautiful change that we all dream of and we all know is possible. So because we're pretty much teaching anyone and everyone, the, the, the next important thing we need to think about is how do we really make these courses, this education really accessible? And I mean accessible to... Um, you know, whether it's people who are disenfranchised, marginalised, you know, people of uh, of different backgrounds, different, you know, um, yeah, you know, different age groups, you know, so how is it, uh, for example, if you look on my courses, I'm really blessed because of how I package my courses, is I have people from all over the world. I have a lot of people who are from, you know, different marginalised communities, a lot of people of colour. I have a, a, a really significant number of people from the LGBTQ community. I have people who are, you know, young, old. I have, and, you know, they all gravitate towards my workshop because of how I package it, because of how I have a history of creating really safe spaces for people to come and be themselves. I've had people, um, you know, come to me and say, I've waited five years for a permaculture course uh, because I've been waiting for a non-white male to come and teach permaculture. And finally, thankfully, because at least now you can understand where I'm coming from. You can understand my perspective as opposed to, you know, preaching a kind of, you know, um, you know, more colonialism, basically. You know, and we, we see in, in the permaculture world how... Um, even though the history of permaculture is really clear in terms of where it came from, uh, you know, and it was really respectful to all the different, uh, you know, cultures who, you know, who helped to formulate the, the kind of ideas and concepts that permaculture now packages. But many of the teachers don't recognize that and see that. So they're packaging it in a really colonialist way. Why are you doing it that way? You should be doing it like this. Having, you know, taken a particular culture's ideas and strategies that, you know, that colonialists came and said, why are you doing it like that? Do it our way, you know, at the end of a gun. Then all of a sudden, more white colonialists are coming and saying, no, don't do it like that, do it this way, permaculture. And so it's the same pattern. So many people, because of my diversity, feel that they can come to my course. And this is another part is really deeply looking at the colonialization or decolonializing culture and transition town and many of the other green movements um so yeah and the other thing that you'll see quite often in many of my workshops are many people you know mothers parents who come to my workshop because the way i see it is to say uh that just because you're a mother that all of a sudden you can't come to my workshop because we're not going to look after you and your kid is going to be too much of a distraction what nonsense is that you know, children are part of our community. They're part of our life. How is it that we as a community can't take care of the children and the parents during our course and learn together? And and you'll see and we see at the end of it, you know, uh, it, it's really beautiful to see how the, the child, maybe you know, the parent says, wow, this child for years, you know, doesn't go up to anyone. But now after two weeks, they are rushing into arms of other people. You know, and the child they can see grows because of the environment that we create. So yeah, so um, so yeah, so how is it we make you know whether it's cost, 
uh, how do you know how do we make these accessible to different people how do we make it attractive to different people from different backgrounds to be part and what we see very often is people from the marginalized communities because of being marginalized probably have a lot more to say a lot more experience a lot more in resonance with permaculture and actually doing a lot of permaculture already uh, and so they actually have a lot more to contribute to the course than um you know, then, then, then many other people who have a more, you know, um, like a, maybe a white male kind of, you know, who had a certain level of privilege in their life. So, um, yeah, so how do we, yeah, how do we make it accessible? How do we make sure that we've got the right people there? And then how is it that we, I, I think another important part with my style of teaching is I don't actually teach. What I do is I facilitate learning. So I'm there, not as the person who has all the knowledge about everything, but someone, you know, so if someone else on my course knows more about a subject than I do, I would be really foolish to try and pretend I know more than that person and to shut them down. That is, for me, that is absolute stupidity. It's like, wow, you know about what? Oh, amazing. Great. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be and really allow each other to teach each other. So again, my style of teaching is more about painting ideas, painting pictures, giving a few facts, and then getting people to work it out for themselves. And, you know, painting scenarios, giving, you know, using their imagination to think in this scenario, what do you think might happen here? Because what we see quite often in, in conventional uh, education is we're told lots of facts, we're told lots of, uh, you know, um, of things that are irrefutable. This is the way it is. Learn it, figure it, you know, just learn it. Whereas my style is, um, is more about, no, let's, let's work this out ourselves. Let's try and see all the variations and see, right, here's a pattern, here's a principle. Uh, let's apply it to this scenario, like food growing, to building a house, to making energy, electricity, to heating, to cooling, to, you know, fermenting, preserving foods, to whatever area we want to bring it to, also for your own personal health and well-being. So how is it we apply all of this to uh, to the different areas? And, um, and yeah, and really getting people through their own imagination to work it out so that they can then see, right, in this particular instance, in this particular place, this is how we actually implement it. Whereas over there, where we've got different circumstances, we need to do it that way because of these different circumstances. So rather than having a recipe, you know, teach people how to really think. Um, so yeah, so this is my style. And it's about how do we go from that kind of theory to think, to work things out, to see the repercussions of our action, to think it through and then try it. Have a go, make mistakes, really important. So when I teach, for example, how to make uh, cook stoves, I, I say, right, these are the principles, this is what we want to do. You know, maybe we want to make a biochar cook stove. So these are the principles, this is the energy, it needs to go from here to there to there. To there. This is what we want to achieve. Here's a bunch of materials. How are you going to make it? And what I look at is I watch, all I need to make sure is whatever they're doing uh, is not dangerous. And when they do it, that if, and in certain things I can see, this is not going to work. But I can see that it's easily fixable later on. So I allow them to make those mistakes. I allow them to make those mistakes and then, hmm, why do you think that didn't work? Ah, what if we made this hole a little bit bigger here, allowed a bit more of that energy to go from there to there. And then they try it, they fix it, and then all of a sudden it works. And now, for me, this is real learning. This is real education. So, again, we're, we're because of the paradigm we're living in, quite often people are um, afraid to make mistakes because we're told, once you've been told something, you must know it. And that is so unrealistic, you know. Um, and so... Yes, yeah, so, so quite often people are afraid to try things and that fear, that lethargy really uh, stops people from actually making, you know, making a difference and really putting things into practice. So, so yes, yeah, so what I encourage people to do is really to make those mistakes, but make safe mistakes. Don't make mistakes that are going to be irrecoverable. And so that, that's my role. That's my role is just to facilitate this kind of creativity, this iterative kind of approach. Try something, fail, try it again, fail, try it again. Ah, amazing. Now I learn. Now I know what to do. 
So as you can probably tell, I can probably talk for hours and hours and hours. So I've got the course itself, which is one thing, and people navigate through that. And you say you create a really beautiful safe space where we make our own rules, our own culture of how is it that we, uh, you know, so, so how I set it up is I set it up in a way that I say, right, my role is to facilitate learning, whereas your role as students is to make this the most beautiful most wonderful, most uh, learnful space. I'm not sure if that's a real word, but I use it anyway. It's the most learnful space where you really feel comfortable to help each other to learn. And so that means you work out how we're going to cook, how we're going to clean, how we're going to sleep, how that's your responsibility. So people take responsibility for, yeah, for that. And part of that is your responsibility is to create the culture for how we navigate these two weeks or however long we're there for so so yeah so creating that really beautiful safe space and then the last thing is uh once the course is finished you know that's actually where the education actually now begins because now you need to put this into action in your real life so what's really important for me is to then give the students a uh, a space, a place where they can communicate. So once a month, we have a Roots and Permaculture Learning Day where it's three hours. People can come open space style, whatever they want to talk about, whatever they want to discuss. You know, like um, if they just started to make a grey water treatment system, okay, come. And you need some help with it? Come, explain it. You know, or maybe quite often people go and learn something and they come, oh my God, I need to tell you this. This is amazing. Ah, and they feel really excited to share with other people. And and so, yes, yeah, so to allow people that space where after the course, they have an opportunity to continue learning. So these, this is my, uh, this is how I, yeah, um, I, I run my workshops. And as I say, the, the most important thing is really how to make it accessible. So for many people, you know, on the same course, someone may have paid, paid 50 pounds, someone else may have paid 500 pounds for the same workshop. Because five pounds for one person may be a huge amount of money, five thousand pounds may be nothing to someone else. So for me to set a fixed price uh, doesn't make any sense. It's about getting this to the people who really need it, who really appreciate it. So yes, that diversity and that accessibility is, as I say, is key. Um.